it's Jenna. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be spending a day in the garden together. And I do just want to let you all know though that I am 100% a beginner. I would classify myself as an enthusiastic novice. So I've done a lot of research, but I don't have a lot of practical experience. And we all know that's the real teacher, especially in the garden. So just so you all know that little disclaimer, but I am very excited and passionate about my backyard plans. And my vision for this garden was kind of to make it that cottage style garden where everything blends together and you get that enchanted whimsical feel and cottage style gardens are very informal and they create that feeling of whimsy which I really wanted but I also wanted to combine that with touches of a rustic Tuscan garden with you know those aged pots and plants native to the Mediterranean like rosemary and lavender and just have that chippy sun-baked feel to my space as well so we're gonna be creating that on a smaller scale today and I am so excited to share with you how we did it. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so this is where I wanted to add some planter beds and I thought it would be really aesthetic to frame our arbor and just add some flowering shrubs and softness to this evergreen border. And I thought this would be a good start for me to have a smaller space to play with and learn from. So we just marked it out using grass spray paint and once we liked the shape, we started to remove the grass. And we actually had a ton of rain the day before and we found that makes such a difference when removing grass. It's just so much easier to do when the ground is wet and soggy. So the next day we had sun and it was time to do the border. So to help everything look really organic and natural, my vision was to use real natural stones that were all different sizes to line the border. But I didn't want my grass growing through all of the stones, so I just installed some landscape fabric with some stakes along the edge. So this will just prevent the grass from overtaking the beds since we have Bermuda grass here and it tends to be quite invasive in the summertime. So one once that was installed, I started laying the stones and actually we just collected these from our backyard since we found so many of them in the dirt when we were digging our evergreen borders. For some reason, they were just all over our property, but you can also purchase these at most specialty landscaping supply stores if you're looking for something similar. Next, it was time to hit the garden centers and pick out the plants. And like I said, I really wanted some Mediterranean style plants, things like lavender and rosemary to give off that rustic feel. But I also wanted to pick out some whimsical flowering plants as well, just to mix in that cottage feel. And for my color palette, I'm really drawn to purple in the garden for some reason. So that was my main color that I was searching for with some whites and different shades of green to accent it. So before digging any holes, I like to arrange everything on the ground first, just to make sure that I like the placement. And this process really helps me visualize because the orientation that I have in my head usually ends up getting switched around and it's just helpful to see it all together. And this is what they ended up looking like after I planted them in the ground. And then I just added a layer of fresh black mulch. And real quick, I'll just walk you through my plant choices. First, we have salvia and I chose this because it adds such a vibrant purple color and it continues blooming all the way until fall and they're also great pollinator plants which is great for the plant and also benefits the surrounding wildlife too. Next we have rosemary which totally fits in with my Mediterranean rustic vibe that I wanted and not only does it look pretty and smell amazing but it's also so convenient to have just to use in my cooking. I love mixing this in with our chicken and our potatoes. And next up we have my favorite of the bunch, lavender and I actually purchased two different types for this area. First I got this Goodwin Creek gray lavender and I bought this for its unique gray tone foliage and when making a planter bed it's really visually pleasing to have different shades of green so I just put this one right in the middle so it would add a pop of contrast and next we have my favorite the English lavender and this is known to be the most fragrant and the most hardy of all the lavender types and I planted this specifically so I could harvest it and you want to harvest it right before it starts flowering like this one is starting to and my goal was to make lavender syrups for coffee and dried lavender scented eye masks and pillows so I just 
just kind of watch them and gather little clippings when they're ready and I'll just make little tiny bundles and hang them upside down in our linen closet to dry. You want to find a cool dry space to dry them and sometimes I'll open up the door every other day to get some airflow in there but I know these bundles aren't very big or anything and my plants are just still young but I'm having fun experimenting. So while we were on vacation in Nantucket last summer we went on the Sconset Bluff Trail and one of the homes had these stunning grasses mixed in with lavender and I was obsessed. I loved the graceful movement of these and the wind and the contrast that it gave to all of the greenery so that is why I added these feather grass plants. These will bloom in the summer with those gorgeous tan grasses but this is considered an invasive plant so I just bought one and we will kind of monitor it and see how it goes. And then lastly we have the Shasta Daisy and I bought these because we have so much purple and I just wanted to break that up with something white while keeping that wildflower like feel and these are supposed to bloom from early summer all the way through fall which is amazing and as you can see they're already blooming like crazy and we have so many more new ones already coming up so definitely love how this planter bed turned out and I'm really excited to watch it grow. All right, so now that I've shown you all the installation of my planter beds, I kind of just wanted to walk you through my gardening routine and how I maintenance everything. And we're also gonna be planting a couple of fun things in containers as well. So the first thing that I like to do almost every day, depending on the weather, is water my plants. And I try to do this first thing in the morning before the direct sun starts to shine on my plants. This way, the plant is hydrated for the full day of hot sun, since this part of my yard gets about 10 hours of sun a day. And while we were out watering this morning, we spotted some visitors, quite a few of them actually. And luckily I've never had any problems with deer eating our plants since we have a fence and then we have evergreen trees directly next to the fence, which I think deters them from jumping over it or trying to get in. Another thing I tried to do early in the morning is get some weeding in. And it is so much easier to pull weeds when the ground is damp with dew versus when the soil has been dried by the sun. And this weeder has truly been a game changer. It makes this chore so easy and honestly is kind of satisfying to do. Another thing that I was so excited to see was all of the new growth on my jasmine vine. And I can't wait for the whole thing to be dotted in these sweet smelling flowers. But because of all of the new growth, I wanted to train it a little bit. And by training it, I'm just gonna weave it through the trellis part of the arbor. And in some places I'll tie it with this jute string just to help secure it and make sure that it's spread out evenly around the arbor. Another thing that I like to do regularly in the garden is deadhead my plants. And one that regularly needs it is this butterfly blue pincushion flower. And it's actually called a pincushion flower because when the flower dies and shrivels up, it resembles a pincushion. How cute is that? But here I'm just gonna trim off the spent blooms and this allows the plant to put more of its energy into staying healthy and creating new ones. I just like to take a walk around my garden and keep an eye on everything and I'll remove any dead or dry leaves and flowers. And here's actually an example of a salvia branch that I cut back that's already sending up its new blooms.
Okay, so now it's time to do some planting. And last year, my Aunt Kathy grew tomatoes and gave everyone canned tomato sauce for Christmas, and it was so delicious. It really did taste sweeter and so much better than store-bought, so that inspired me to try my hand at growing tomatoes this year. And since this is my first year growing tomatoes, this will just be somewhat of an experiment. So something that I wanted to try out was buying one of these bigger tomato plants versus the small ones, just to see if it really makes a difference to buy them this large, or if I can get the same results with the smaller plants. And because I don't have a garden bed in our backyard, I will be using containers to grow the tomatoes. So I found these and really loved the rustic look of them. You do need very large containers for tomato plants because they have an extensive root system and for it to thrive, you need to give those roots room to grow. So I've heard that plastic isn't always the best option since it doesn't breathe as well as something like terracotta or a grow bag, but I just decided to go for it and see what happens. I also just went ahead and drilled a couple of extra holes in the bottom of the container just to ensure that the plants will have enough drainage. And as much as I want to go out and spend money on a fancy potting station, something that I found is a wheelbarrow does the trick just fine. So here I used half compost and half garden soil and just mixed that all together. Then I made a nice deep hole for my tomato plant and transferred it into the planter. And this is actually one of the few plants where you can plant way below the soil line because it can actually grow roots from the exposed stem area. So you wanna plant this one as as deep as you can to encourage stronger root growth and you can even tear off the bottom leaves to sink it further into the soil. Now, another thing that's very important to have with indeterminate tomatoes is support. And I had heard good things about using stakes as opposed to tomato cages, so I just decided to try these thinking that they would be easier to store afterwards. I also used some of the jute cord that I used on my trellis to tie the plant to the stake so it would be nice and supported as it grows. Now, here in North Carolina, we are very susceptible to blight, which is a fungus disease caused by mildew that spreads in warm, wet weather. So to prevent that, I'm just using this Captain Jack's Copper Fungicide, and this is certified organic for gardening. So I just sprayed that all over the leaves and some around the base of the plant as well. Now, another disease that tomatoes are susceptible to is blossom end rot, which is usually caused by a lack of calcium. So to give my plant extra calcium, I'm using this bone meal, and my aunt also told me that crushed up eggshells work great too. So just something to help prevent that and be proactive. And then lastly, we have fertilizer. And this Espoma brand was highly recommended by my aunt, and I've seen lots of other YouTube channels recommend it as well. So I will try to apply this every two weeks or so, and same thing with the bone meal. And then I just did the exact same thing with my smaller tomato plants, mixing the compost and potting mix and planting them as deep as I can, and then adding all of the fertilizers and treatments afterwards. And don't forget to label. I planted one red beef steak, one big beef, and two super sweet cherry tomatoes. So this is what they looked like once they were all potted and ready to go. And I just moved them into a place with lots of sunlight. And watering tomatoes is very important. They need lots of water to support their root systems. And I plan to water them every day early in the morning. And also when watering your plant, you wanna make sure that you water at the base of the plant and try your best not to get the leaves wet because that can cause disease. So this is what they look like once they were all planted and placed. And of course, I will keep you all updated in future videos. And if you have any tomato growing tips for thriving tomatoes, be sure to leave them in the comments. Now, like I said in the beginning of this video, I wanted that Mediterranean vibe in my backyard space. So when I came across more of this Elegance Purple Lavender at Lowe's, I went a little crazy and bought some more. And I just wanted to plant these in containers to accent my garden and make it feel more rustic. So I just gathered these rustic pots that I did in two previous DIY videos, and I will link those below as well as all of the products that I can from this video. It's really important that lavender has good drainage, so I just added a small layer of these little rocks to the base of the planter to make sure that everything drained well. And then from there, I just added some potting soil and compost and mixed them all together.
Now to improve airflow and drainage, I just added some builder sand to my soil since lavender typically thrives in sandy chalky soil. Now this plant was pretty root bound, meaning that the roots started growing too much for the container that it was in. So to prevent the plant from starving itself and basically choking itself out through the roots, I just encouraged the roots to grow in other directions by breaking them up a little bit. And then I just backfilled the rest of the container with soil. And lavender prefers a slightly alkaline, sweet soil, so I just sprinkled some garden lime and mixed that in to make sure that it would be happy in its new home. And that's the great thing about planting things in containers is that you have a lot more control over the environment and you can make sure that everything is specific to that plant so it can thrive. So I just used these to frame our arbor and add some extra visual interest to our planter bed area and just give it that little rustic exclamation point. Now established lavender is very drought tolerant, but I found that it does benefit from frequent watering while it's getting established. So I'll come out here usually and give it a drink every other day or every day, depending on how it's looking. And we do have ours in full sun, so they do tend to get quite thirsty. And then to balance it out, I also planted this one in a rustic pot that I found at the Home Depot. And I just love how by placing these here, it added that rustic Tuscan charm to my garden. And I absolutely love how this little area turned out and I can't wait to watch everything grow in full and tall. Okay, so now that we have everything planted, I have one more thing that I really wanted to do, and that is to start a garden journal. And I wanted to try to find one with blank pages so I could freely draw and make doodles of my plants and future garden plans. Since gardening can be a slow process, it's easy to forget how you planted something or the progress and failures that happen and maybe why you think they happen. So this way I can make note of all the little things that I observe and keep records of the way that I planted certain flowers. So hopefully it will make things easier to learn from so I can become a better gardener with time. And I like to fill my garden journal with rough sketches and doodles to add that feeling of whimsy. And I also like to combine journaling thoughts with facts and observations, making my journal a blended combination of both a creative art and a science, because we all know that mother nature is the real teacher and I cannot wait to see what she does with my garden. All right, everyone, that about wraps up this video. I hope that you enjoyed seeing my gardening video. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up because this one was definitely a labor of love for me. So it would really mean a lot if you could give this video a like and leave me a comment letting me know your thoughts. You know, do you want to see more gardening content or should I stick to just decorating the inside of my home? Let me know below. And I just want to thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you have a fabulous week and I will see you all in my next one. Bye.